Hi, I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at yet another impulse purchase that I made a few weeks ago. This Crest brand smart power single adapter with USB. We'll take it out of the box, we'll set it up using the native app and as always, we're going to take a look at it in Home Assistant as well and do some latency tests. If you want to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below, or there are some affiliate links in that description as well, where you can buy some of the smart gadgets that I use in my own smart home. So while I roll the intro, take a moment to subscribe. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get notified when I release new videos each week. And let's get started. So I mentioned in the video about the Mirabella Genio camera that when we were in Big W a couple of weeks ago purchasing some cat accessories, we also made some impulse purchases. And one of those was this smart plug for $18.99. Now I thought it might be useful because it has two USB ports and it's also got power monitoring. So let's take a look around the box. Now on the front, we see that it is power monitoring with two USB ports. Those two USB ports have a 2.4 amp output. Power monitoring, main switch on and off. It supports Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. There's Crest app control. If we look around the side, that's nothing particularly exciting. There's nothing particularly exciting on there. Energy monitoring, time of function, control from anywhere and connect to smart assistant. Uh, but we do have some specifications on this side. So it's a single outlet with power monitoring, two USB ports at a 2.4 amp output. It's a 240 volt 50 hertz unit with a maximum current of 10 amps and a maximum power of 2.4 kilowatts. Uh, it requires wireless 2.4 gigahertz 802.11bg or n and it's designed and certified to Australian standards. Uh, we've got a QR code to get product support and there's the uh, Google and Amazon logos there. And lastly, we've got on the bottom here that it's a powered by Tuya. So now that we've uh, had a look around the outside of the box, it's time to uh, get it out of the box and see what's inside. So I'll cut, it's just got two little um, transparent uh, plastic stickers uh, on uh, one on either side of the box and we'll uh, there's one at the top and the bottom as well that I've missed okay so we've cut those stickers and I will open up the box um, and the packaging is pretty nice it's it presents it quite well uh, in this kind of uh, injection molded plastic the unit itself we've got here, and I'll, I'll pop that down onto uh, this camera here. Take out the plastic insert, and we've got a user manual. I'll set all of that aside, and let's take a look at the unit itself. Uh, so, uh, build quality, it feels okay. Uh, it's on par with anything like the uh, Arlec Grid Connect or the Brilliant Smart Unit. Um, it's got the two USB Type A ports with a 2.4 amp max USB output on the top, uh, and there's uh, an LED uh, at the bottom uh, and a power switch uh, on the bottom edge there as well. I'll show you that on this camera. Hopefully, it's not too blown out too much. Um, it's nice and narrow, uh, and that is going to be of benefit if you needed to put more than one of these into, say, a power board or into uh, a dual GPO. Uh, and it's got a decent offset from the wall as well, so that uh, it's not going to foul on switches when you plug it in. Speaking of plugging it in, I'm going to do that now, and we'll then get it paired into the uh, Tuya app. 
so I've just plugged it into power and I'm going to open up the to your smart app uh, and I'll tap plus in the top right corner and tap add device uh, and I'm going to use a socket Wi-Fi and we've got uh, the force and the Wi-Fi password I'll tap next uh, and we need to power on the device after it's been powered off for 10 seconds it's been in the box um, it's been powered on for the very first time now so I'm going to tap next and I'm going to press and hold the reset button for five seconds that's the same as the power button so I'll do that now we've now got a blue LED on the switch flashing there so I'll tap next I'll confirm that the indicator is blinking because I can see it and it's blinking quickly and now we're adding the device okay so it's just toggled which I'm assuming means that it has uh, finished pairing uh, and it's adding the device in to your smart now. There we go, so it's finished. We've got AU plug 122. I'm just gonna change that name and hit save. Now I will say that I did just hear the Amazon Echo in the other room announce uh, that it had discovered a new device, which bodes well for the Home Assistant integration when uh, we get to that point. I'm gonna put this in the dining room and tap done. So it's added successfully and we go straight into the unit there and I'm just going to pop this uh, light bulb here. I, this is just a dumb IKEA light bulb that I've got plugged into the smart switch here just so that we can do some testing. So the power's on, tap the big button in the middle and power's off, back on again, uh, or the bottom left as well does the same thing. We've got a timer function so we can add a timer at a specific time we can power it on or off uh, we can repeat it on a daily basis uh, and we can send a notification so that's more of a schedule than a timer uh, there's a countdown so that's more of a timer than uh, the timer that's actually there so that's just a countdown timer uh, and lastly we've got the energy here as well so uh, we can see that currently we're drawing zero milliamps, uh, zero watts. We have 248.6 volts uh, and the total power in kilowatts there. Uh, and it looks like it breaks this down into monthly details as well. So we can actually break down our consumption by the day of the month, which is kind of nice. If I uh, back out of there and we'll tap the edit button in the top right hand corner, uh, so we've got all of the same stuff on any of our two accessories. We can change the name or the room. We've got device information, tap to run and automation, device review, third party control, offline notifications, sharing, grouping, FAQs and feedback, adding to the home screen, checking the device network and device updates. Now, uh, you may or may not have seen me set the countdown to one minute there and that countdown did just expire um, so the light did just come on so if I now tap on the energy here we should see that we are drawing currently it says uh, 58 milliamps uh, but it looks like it's polling about every second or so maybe one or two seconds it's pulling about eight and a half to nine watts uh, and uh, the current does uh, move a little bit, but that's all good. The voltage, um, the voltage can move a little bit as well because we have solar here, uh, and uh, the inverter is going to push that voltage up. So being a smart switch, there's actually not a whole lot to the interface here. It's pretty much on off. We've also got the timer functions that we mentioned there and the energy monitoring, which is uh, kind of nice to have. Now in the past, we've not had a lot of luck with getting that energy monitoring data into Home Assistant. So speaking of Home Assistant, let's take a look and see whether we can get that energy monitoring over there. So over on my laptop here, I'm just gonna run Hass test. Uh, which is an alias that I've created that opens up my Home Assistant in a kiosk window in Microsoft Edge. 
uh, and uh, we've got our demo instance of Home Assistant here. As always, we'll go to Configuration, Devices and Services, and we're on the Integrations tab here. Over on Tuya, we see we've got 16 devices and 51 entities. If I click the three dot stack and reload, this may change, but I have a feeling it won't because I think we only had 15 uh, earlier today. And now that we've got this smart switch, it's uh, already detected that. So if I hit OK, the integration was reloaded. So I'll hit OK, uh, and we've still got 16 devices and 51 entities. I'm going to tap the 16 devices here, and we should now see in here Crest Smart Plug. So I'll click on that, and we have Socket 1, and it's showing me three disabled sensors of current, power, and voltage. Uh, I'm not sure why those are disabled. Uh, disabled by integration will not be added to Home Assistant. This might not work yet with all integrations. I will see if I can enable those sensors. Uh, so by enabling those, it's uh, telling me that it's going to uh, update that in 30 seconds or so. Uh, so we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, we see we've got the socket here and if I go to controls, there's not a whole lot of information in here as usual. It's currently on. If I click on off, so uh, that took a moment to turn off. That latency was a little higher than normal, uh, but if I turn it back on, that was uh, a little better. I think that the latency there might have just been because it was refreshing the integration. Uh, so I'll try that again. We'll go off and on. So uh, standard about half a second latency there. Um, so now that it's refreshed, let's see if we've got anything in these sensors. So I'll click on that. Uh, and the current, it's showing me the 58 milliamps. The power, if I click on that, we've got 8.6 watts. And the voltage, we've got the 246.8 volts that we saw in the app as well. So uh, all of that appears to be reporting uh, as I would hope for it to. So now that we know that we can get those statistics into Home Assistant, I want to find out whether or not those statistics are going to work on the energy dashboard. So you see I've got my energy dashboard here and we've got monitor individual devices down here as well. So I've got the dishwasher and the washing machine. I'm monitoring the consumption of those devices over time so that we can then determine the appliances that are consuming the most power when we use them. So if this works with Home Assistant long-term statistics, this will be the cheapest smart plug with power monitoring that you can then also use with the Home Assistant long-term statistics that I've ever seen. So I'm going to head to the configuration menu in Home Assistant. I'm going to go to the dashboards menu item in here, and I'm going to grab the uh, energy dashboard here. So we've clicked on that and now we can see that we've got our uh, electricity grid details, our solar panels, uh, our home battery storage and our gas consumption. Unfortunately we don't have a battery here uh, and as far as I'm aware there's no uh, sensors available for the um, Australian gas meters just yet. Hopefully those will come in the future. I'm going to click on add device under individual devices and I'm going to see if I can find under device consumption energy in kilowatt hours. Let's see if I can find Crest. So I can't see that in the energy dashboard. So I would say that that means that it doesn't support the long term statistics required by Home Assistant for the individual device tracking. The only devices that I have so far that do support that tracking are the TP-Link 
Casa smart switches. Uh, I in fact bought two more of those energy monitoring TP-Link Casa smart switches to add additional uh, energy monitoring to my smart home. So that's the Crest smart power single adapter with USB for $18.99 for Big W. Now, in the pros column, it's got the two USB type A ports with up to 2.4 amps of power. It's got power monitoring and at the price point of $19 for a device with power monitoring, that's actually pretty great. The fact that it also is able to pass that power monitoring data through to Home Assistant if you're using the new two-year integration is fantastic. It did need to be enabled separately, but I can live with that. As you can see here, it's also a nice slimline unit, so it doesn't block power outlets either side if you were using it, say, in a dual GPO or in a power board like this. Now in the cons column, it's a two-year device. And as we've discussed many, many times before, in my opinion, that could potentially negate all of the pros. And because I was unable to find any reference to this particular unit on the Black Adder Tasmoda repository, I don't know how much luck I'll have if I decide that I want to try to flash it to remove the reliance on the cloud technology. And because there's no template available, I'm gonna to need to figure out the template for myself. I've never done that before. I'm gonna explore that though, and we'll do that in another video in the future. Now, because I've already paired it using the Tuya app, that means that it's likely the only way for me to now flash this is using the serial method. And that means taking the unit apart and looking at the tolerances on the back of this unit, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to do that without more or less destroying the casing. So it's hard to say whether it's gonna go back together cleanly if and when we do that, or if it's even going to be worthwhile because there's a good chance that this unit is using the RTL8720 chip, much like the Genio pixel strips that we saw the other week. That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with home automation ideas and your thoughts on these Crest smart switches. Don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like and that helps out the YouTube algorithm to then recommend this video to more viewers. If you're not already subscribed, please consider changing that now. And while you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll also then get notified when I release new videos each week. If you'd like to help to support what we're doing here at the channel and you're in the market for a VPN provider, there is an affiliate link for NordVPN in the video description down below. I've chosen to partner with NordVPN because they have the best infrastructure that I've seen of any of the VPN providers advertised. They also have a strict no logs policy and they have servers all over the planet. And on top of that, they have apps for just about every platform across desktop and mobile. So no matter what device you're using and wherever you are in the world, you should be able to then secure your internet browsing using a VPN and that will help to protect your personal information. So get a VPN today and use my link below to sign up for NordVPN. Lastly, if you're not in the market for a VPN and you like what I'm doing here and you wanna to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions made through buy me a coffee will be put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.